Tim McCamus again, we're going to start a new series on composites. So we've went through a lot of different uh, build series and fabrication series and um, we do all of our own composites on site. So we have a company called Velocity Composites where, where all of our composite parts are produced. So I thought we'd start tonight with a little rundown of the, of the shop and give you an idea of some of the basics of composites and what we do here. People use composites as kind of a loose term, really, uh, you know, a composite part is anything that's made up of different materials bonded together to make a solid unit. So, um, for instance, uh, uh, a piece of plywood, a three quarter inch piece of plywood would be a composite because it's using different layers of wood in different directions and it's all glued together and then compressed tight. So basically that is a composite uh, also different than from what we do, but we're using uh, uh, carbon cloth, fiberglass cloth, fiberglass mat, different types of dry cloth with resin, and we're bonding that together in a compressed form to make um, racing components. So this is the shop. Uh, you might have seen some uh, other video tours of some composite shops before. This is our shop. We try to keep it nice and clean, just like our fab shop is. To give you an idea, we've got a lot of stuff in here, a lot of equipment. This is our Grieve oven. This is a 500 degree curing oven. It's fully automated. It has vacuum controls inside. So this is used to uh, cure some of our really high-end, uh, smaller composite parts. It's six foot by seven foot by eight foot inside. So we can get some pretty big parts in there, not a body, but we can get a lot of stuff in here. Um, the, the control system will, uh, will be used to uh, ramp the temperature in, dwell the temperature, ramp the temperature down. It does everything you can imagine. Uh, all while monitoring the vacuum. So this is a nice uh, piece that you won't see in many shops. Uh, you know, this isn't a guy saying they got a composite shop and we've got some good equipment in here. We don't work out of a barn with a bunch of pallet racking and a bunch of shit piled up in the corner. I mean, this is nice equipment to do the job properly. So this Grieve oven is, uh, is very expensive, but it's also a very good part uh, when you're trying to cure composites because you have to control that half a degree at a time. So the, the temperature control in is very important. But I'm just gonna give you a walk around here and we're gonna go through some of our equipment and um, some of the processes we use. So uh, kind of pan around the shop here a little bit. We got a, uh, we got a mixing station over here and uh, we got, that's a, a um, uh, it's, it's a sandblast cabinet, but it's used to mix dry uh, fibers with so that that stuff doesn't get in the air. Um, we have two mixing stations. We have one on this side of the shop and one on this side of the shop. And uh, this, uh, this is not cleaned up for the videos. This is how these guys keep this every day. Okay, so um, just like our fab shop, uh, we, we make sure that, that our work area is clean and everything is in order. So if you look at uh, some other composite shops, they don't look like this, okay? So uh, this is our uh, spray booth here. So this is a uh, temperature controlled spray booth. This is where we're gonna use to uh, spray all the different types of gel coats on the parts that we use. So we have an unlimited supply of gel coats that we use for different applications. So that's all gonna be sprayed in here. On the other side of the wall here, we've got a trim room. We've got a curing room, which is curing for our large body components. The other side of the shop here is all mold storage. This area here is something that you really don't see in many shops. I had this rack custom built for us and it's uh, automated so that we can select the material. You can see this thing is full. It holds 20 rolls of material. These guys can come over here and they just hit a button and move it around to the selected material they want and then stop it, pull it out. And uh, we'll use this uh, Eastman cutting table. Now, some shops, they use cardboard patterns and scissors like uh, they're in second grade craft class, okay? Well, we don't do that bullshit. This is a automated cutting table, okay? It's all computer controlled. It's got a gantry cutter on it. This is a vacuum table. So we pull the material out all the way to the end. We pull the program up, turn on the vacuum, and it sucks the material down tight to the table. And then that automated gantry there will come down and it will cut all of the patterns out, all the pieces that are already set up in there. We draw all this stuff in AutoCAD. It is as fast as you can cut, it will go. I mean, it will get to the end of this table and cut everything out. You pick the pieces up, pull out another part and cut it again. This particular machine will cut multiple layers. So we can cut uh, six, seven, eight, ten 10 layers at a time. So if we're cutting um, multiple parts out, we can stack the material up and um, cut it. So this is a this is a huge savings for us. So we don't 
dig around through patterns looking for something that might be marked from five years ago that we need to cut out. Everything's organized on our server, so we pull up the, the component, we pull up the master. Underneath that will be all the files we need to cut the parts for that particular body or hood scoop or seat or whatever. All that stuff is stored in there. So very sophisticated machine. Um, you're not going to see this in, in most shops. Mo most guys are going to just kind of uh, use paper patterns and, and hand cut the stuff out. We don't go for any of that. This is, this is a very nice machine that uh, works flawlessly. So it's really saved us a lot of time. And um, the editability of the parts is, is very good too. So we need to tune up a particular pattern. We can just make a change to that AutoCAD file and then upload it to this system and we're good to go. We are talking about some basics of composite. So I laid out a few pieces here. And if you guys, uh, if any of you got uh, use our carbon fiber repair kit, the kit that we sell on our site, which you should have in your trailer, because if you're at the track and you need to do a minor repair on your front end or your door or your quarter panel, you need to have that kit. It's very, very uh, easy to use. It has instructions in it. It gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, guide on how to uh, uh, do the repair. But these are some of the components that we use. And I wanted to just kind of touch on some of the dry material. So um, obviously you can kind of tell by looking at it, this, this dark black, this is gonna be carbon fiber, okay? This is carbon fiber. This is a twill weave carbon. And it's just made up of different strands of carbon fiber toe. This is one toe of carbon here. And that's made up of all these little individual strands. And then uh, you'll have, this is a fiberglass cloth. This is a standard weave here. This is woven a little different than the twill. This is a straight weave. And then this is gonna be a fiberglass mat. And this is just fiberglass strands that are all, uh, they have a binder that holds them all together. We buy this by different weights, by the uh, different thicknesses. The heavier the weight, the heavier the thickness will be here. This is an aramid fiber here. This does not come in the carbon fiber repair kit because it's hard to work with. It's called an aramid fiber and it's uh, similar to what's used in a bulletproof vest or any kind of a structure that you need really high strength in. So we use this material in a lot of our components. We'll use it in a body, for instance, around the wheel openings, around the door hinge area, around the door striker area around the, the back edge of the quarter panel where the door meets it, around the rear wheel opening, around the wheelie bar opening, because it can take stress and it's very tough. This stuff is very hard to cut and it, it withstands impacts very well. So uh, an aramid fiber combined with a carbon fiber cloth is very, very strong composite layup. Again, we don't include this in that kit, but we use a lot of this here in the shop. And this, does, this stuff doesn't want to lay out good. It has to be compressed under vacuum when you're, when you're laminating with it. So again, these parts come in the kit. This does not, but this is a very uh, integral part of our layup here in the shop. This last piece is, uh, is a piece of peel ply material. It comes in the kit too. And what this is, is it's a very slick finish and it won't bond to the resin. So when you're laminating a quick repair at the track, after you get your material down and your resin brushed out and flat, then you'll put this peel ply material on top of, of your repair, and then you'll just dry wet it, which is what you're gonna do is you're, you can use a dry brush, or you can use the uh, brush that you had the resin in without any extra resin in it, and you brush this out. And what that does is that helps this lay out flat and compress, because you're not gonna do it under vacuum at the track, so or even in your shop at home if you're doing a quick repair. So this peel ply, will lay out nice and evenly. And if you've got some curves and, and tight areas, you can cut it and slice it and it can overlap. So if you've got to go around a tight corner, you can overlap this and it'll still give you the same effect. But what that's gonna do is gonna give you a nice even finish on the uh, back side of the carbon. So if you ever get a carbon fiber body and there's not very many shops that take the time to do this, but when you get it, it looks all wrinkled up and, and you'll see wrinkles of resin and, and, and different runs on the back of the carbon. That's from not using peel ply. If you look at our bodies, when you get them, they have a nice smooth satin finish. There's no wrinkles. The finish on the underneath side of our carbon is as nice as the finish on the gel coat side. But a lot of these guys want to shortcut this stuff and they don't want to take the time to use peel ply, which is a, it's, it's, a, it's another step. It costs more 
but it's the right way to do it. So that's why we use this on all of our composite parts, our, all, I'm sorry, all of our um, carbon fiber parts. We don't use it on the fiberglass stuff. Um, but this material really makes a big difference in the, the compression and the, and the air bubbles and the, and the laminate layup when you finish up the part. So this peel ply will, will really make a difference in how that part lays up. And uh, this stuff comes in that kit also. This series is gonna be, um, I think six or seven parts, but we're gonna, we're gonna touch on um, some repair. We're gonna touch on some, some flat panels, what they're used for, what, um, where, where we use them and where not to use them. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna get into uh, some actual uh, damage repair at the track that you can do quickly. Um, we're gonna talk about some different things about how you can uh, change the shape of the panels with a little bit of heat. Um, gonna touch on a lot of stuff. So um, this is our intro part of this series. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, you can always contact us for more information, but uh, follow us through the end here. And by the uh, time we get done with this series, you should be pretty well versed in composites. So thanks for watching.